What's going on guys? It's Brandon or Tesla Flex and today I'm here with my 2023 Model 3 performance and my 2023 Model Y performance. But these two cars actually have something very different about them. Also, if you're purchasing a Tesla, don't forget to use my referral link in the description below to save $250 and get three months of full self-driving on your new Tesla. So let's start with the Model 3. This was built in November 2022 and it has hardware three. So it has eight cameras total, two are up front with a sensor up there. And then we have a repeater on each side that looks like this. And then we have these on the B pillars. And then we have one in the back for the backup camera. And it's right here. And then on the Model Y, this is a little bit different because they just added hardware four to the Model Ys starting in mid June. So if you look right here, you can see this has kind of a red tint on the uh, repeater. And you can look right here, you can also see the turn signal thing is a little bit smaller. And if you look at the Model 3, it has a way smaller camera and then the turn signal is also a lot longer and wider. But that doesn't just change there. If you look right up here, we have still two cameras, but they also have the red tint. And then there's nothing in the third spot. They got rid of that actually. And then same thing, repeater on that side. But this is where it gets kind of crazy because I've never seen a backup camera this big. We have the backup camera and it is just massive. Let's go look at the other one real quick just to see the like scale of it. This is on every Tesla and you can see it's a lot smaller. Like just the, the lens is smaller. It probably views a lot smaller, but the real difference is how you actually see the cameras in the preview. So this is what it probably looks like in the Model 3. It looks pretty similar, but the difference is right here. You have never been able to see the cameras this good. Let me close the door actually right here. You can see that the side repeater cameras are a lot more colorful and they're a lot higher resolution. So it doesn't really impact the consumer that much unless they really care about how it looks. But obviously in the long run, it's gonna be good. A higher megapixel camera is just gonna be better for full self driving. And there's also some changes to this. So this whole housing is different. And I actually found that out because when they were tinting my windows, they had a pre-cut uh, tint for the windshield and they couldn't get it to fit. They were measuring it. It was like a little bit too small because this is actually three quarters of an inch wider because the housing is different. So this also has the cabin radar and infrared sensors. All right, so we're in the Model 3. Uh, it's pretty much the same view, except if you look right here, it's just not as colorful. It looks like a little bit scaled down. Obviously when Tesla started adding the blind spot cameras, they, they didn't intend for the repeaters to actually be used for blind spot cameras for the longest time. This is all you saw when you pulled up the camera. And that's what I had from 2019 to basically 2021 when they added it. So, I mean, now they're actually kind of improving it. And I guess if you look right here, it's a little bit pops up. You can see it's a lot different. It, it looks so much like less colorful because this is like pretty green stuff behind me. And you can see the Model Y, it was a lot greener. And then if you look right here, the Model 3 camera is so tiny. It's so, I didn't realize how much smaller it was in the Model Y. It's like, I think it's tiny. And there's also, there's no radar or anything like they can't even fit it. So they actually haven't even put a uh, hardware four in the model three yet. And that's because they're waiting for the refresh, which should be coming very soon. They just stopped production at Fremont for some upgrades. Yeah. They don't, they don't really do upgrades for fun. They do it with a purpose because obviously they want to be producing as many Teslas as possible. So they're taking this little hit for a couple weeks while they upgrade their lines. But the Highland model three is going to be pretty cool. I also forgot to mention that the model three with hardware three, it has a completely different computer and unfortunately it is not retrofitable with hardware four because the way I think the, the bolt clips and stuff and the shape of the computer for hardware four is different. So you can't do it backwards. So unfortunately there's no hardware four retrofits, which is probably why Tesla is offering the, like the one time FSD transfer because there's people with like, you know, 2017 model S's that were told that they would get upgraded to full self driving when they paid three, $5,000 back then. And now they're like, they can't get a retrofit. So, I think it's nice that Tesla is actually offering the FST capability retrofit, but obviously they're not going to do this one time. It's going to be more than one time. I'm calling it right now. Mark my words, they're going to do this more than one time. It's a really good way to like capture loyalty sales because people will trade in their Teslas or sell their Teslas and get a brand new one because Tesla knows their consumers are very loyal. Anyways, guys, that's going to be all for this video. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything. I did just get the Model Y, so I might have missed a few things with hardware four, maybe a few things with hardware three, but don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.